Hello everyone. I am Dr. Adarsh Deep, Associate Professor in Zoology at Government College for Women, Panchkula. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic of ecology that is population interactions. As you know, the ecosystem is functional unit and its constituent are biotic and abiotic factors. All living beings come under biotic factors. And also, no organism is an autonomous entity isolated from its surroundings as it is dependent on other organisms for food, shelter and certain other necessities. So we can say an organism's association and interactions with its environment are fundamental to the survival of that organism and also for the functioning of the ecosystem as a whole. So in this chapter, we are going to learn about that how different populations interact with each other, whether they are plants or animals, and also about the different types of relationship between them. It will also cover up whether a population will survive or vanish in the presence of other population. So let us start with it. If somebody asks you that define the population interactions, so how you can define the population interactions? We can say that all organisms are influenced by mutual biotic relationships and interactions with other individuals known as the population interactions as a result of natural mode of relationship. These relation may be intraspecific or interspecific. Intraspecific means between the two individuals of same species and interspecific means between the two individuals of different species. So question arises here that why live together? To answer this question we can say there is always competition for food and territory in the animal world. To avoid competing with other species, it is most essential for an animal to find a specific niche within its environment. In other words, we can say that these relationships are necessary to form comfortable and stable environment and to harmoniously share the same space and their food resources. In a community, members of different populations show interspecific interactions on three bases. Number one, nature of food and mode of food gathering. Number two, kind of shelter. And number three, for some specific habits like breeding, aggregation, etc. These interactions determine the nature of relationship between these species within the community. These interspecific relationship are divided into three basic types. First is positive or beneficial interactions. In these, members of either one or both the interacting species are benefited but neither is harmed. Second is negative interactions. In these, members of either one or both the interacting species are harmed. These are also called antagonism. And third category is of neutral interactions, in which neither of two species is benefited nor harmed. Positive or beneficial interactions are also known as symbiosis, in which one or both species are benefited. These are further divided into three categories. First is proto-cooperation, second is mutualism and third is commensalism. In the same way, antagonism or negative interactions 
are also further divided into three categories the antibiosis, exploitation and competition. Exploitation again subdivided into parasitism and predation. Have a look on this chart. Here plus sign means beneficial effect, negative sign means harmful effect and zero means no effect. So, if there are two species A and B and both the species are benefited, then the relationship will be mutualism and proto-cooperation. In second category, the species A is benefited but the species B is not affected. Such relationship is known as commensalism. When both the species A and B remain unaffected with each other, then it is known as neutrality. In fourth category, species A is unaffected but B is negatively affected. Such relationship is known as antibiosis or amensalism. In fifth category, the species A is benefited and species B is harmed or negatively affected. Such relationship is known as exploitation which covers up parasitism and predation. In sixth category, both the species are negatively harmed. So, such relationship is known as competition. From this chart, it is very clear that first three categories are symbiosis and the fourth, fifth and sixth category comes under the antagonism. Let us take it one by one. First of all, proto-cooperation. It is a kind of symbiosis in which both the partners are benefited and increase the chance of survival of each other but they can live separately also. So the relation is facultative or optional. In this partners are not always in contact but it is for in contact for short periods. In this association usually one partner is associated with the other for food. There are so many examples of such relationship. One is of tick bird and rhinoceros association. The oxpecker picks parasites of large mammals such as buffalo, rhino, elephant and zebra. So the bird gets the food while rhinoceros is relieved of its sanguivorous ectoparasites like lice, ticks, mites. The bird also warns the larger partner of any approaching danger. Next is crocodile and bird association. In this, Pulvianus egyptius enters the opened mouth of crocodile and eats the leeches. Bird get food and crocodile is relieved of the sanguivorous parasites. In hermit crab and sea anemone association, in this hermit crab lives inside an empty gastropod shell and fixes a sea anemone on the shell. The sea anemone provides camouflage to the crab while crab helps in dispersal of the sea anemone. The cylindrid also defends the crab by its batteries of nematoblast on its tentacles while also gets food particles falling from the crab. Sometimes a polychaete worm nares is also found in the same gastropod shell. The worm keeps the shell clean by feeding on the organic waste of the crab while also get bits of food left over by the master of the association or the food pieces snatched from the claws of the crab. Then this association is called triple alliance but the living partners of the association do not have biological continuity. As the hermit crab grow in size it leaves the old shell house and occupies a larger shell but it transfers its old partner sea anemone from the old shell to its new shell. During this transfer sometimes 
sea anemone breaks into two pieces. Each piece regenerates into the complete sea anemone, so causing multiplication. One more interesting example is of trichophilus green algae and sloth association. The green algae grows on the body surface of sloth, so being dispersed by the mammal, while in turn provides protective coloration to the sloth. Next is bird cattle association. Some birds such as crows, corvus, cattle egret, bubulcus, and jungle manna, acridotherus, move about the grazing animals, often sitting on their backs or heads and eat upon ticks and other ectoparasites. So the birds get ready supply of food while the cattle is relieved of its ectoparasites. Physelia and Nomius Fish Association Physelia, commonly called as Portuguese Man of War, it is a colonial and polymorphic cilantrate. A fish Nomius is found among the tentacles of the Dactylozoids and gets protection from the predators. In turn, Physelia gets the bits of food being torn by the fish. It also attracts the predaceous fishes toward the tentacles which capture them. One more common example is of Ostrich Zebra Association. These help each other in sensing the approach of enemy from a distance. The ostrich looking and zebra smelling the intruder. Second type of relationship is of mutualism. Mutualism can be defined as the kind of positive interaction in which members of two different species favor the growth and survival of each other and their association is obligatory. The mutualism can be of following types between plant and plant, between plant and animals, between animals and animals, between microbe and plant. Let us take one by one. First is between plant and plant. Lichens are the best example of this category. They involve the symbiotic interspecific association of a green alga, phycobiont and a fungus Mycobiont. The core of lichen is formed of green alga cell, about 95%, which photosynthesize the food for themselves and also for the fungus. The fungal hyphae, about 5%, and form the protective cover around the algal cells. These also provide moisture and minerals to the algal cell. Two partners are so interdependent and morphologically integrated that these form a third kind of organism which resembles neither of the partners. Mutualism in the lichens is so strong that neither the fungus nor the alga can live independently under natural conditions. The lichens show the evolution of mutualism from the parasitism due to the mutual adaptation between the parasite and the host. In primitive lichens, fungal hyphae actually penetrate into the algal cells and behave as parasite, while in advanced lichen, two live in close harmony. So here, contact is closed and permanent as well as obligatory. One more example is Microrhizae. It represents a mutualistic interaction between the hyphae of the fungus, boletus, and roots of high plants, pinus. The roots provide food and shelter to the fungus, while later helps in the absorption of water, minerals, and produce growth-promoting chemicals and secrete antibiotics to provide protection from the pathogenic organisms. Microrhizae are divided into two categories 
on the basis of their location. One is ectomycorrhizae in which fungal hyphae mainly remain on the surface of the roots of the pines, oaks, beech. Second is the endomycorrhizae in which fungal hyphae mainly located in intracellular spaces of cortex and form VAM microrhizae in red maple and orchids. In some, the fungal hyphae form clusters around the roots and are called peritrophic microrhizae. The second category is between plant and animals. Mutualism between flowering plants and their animal pollinators where a honeybee gets its feed, nectar or the pollens and simultaneously would transfer the pollens of this flower during the next visit to another flower or to the female organs of the same flower. Next example is of mutualism between animals and fungi. Some ants and termites are known to cultivate and grow fungal gardens in the specialized chamber of their homes. The worker ants of Ecta genus cut small pieces of green leaves of certain plants, deposit these pieces into their nests, chew these pieces and vomit out the pulpy mass and spread it out as a bed for the growth of the fungus. That is Rosets gongylophora. This mycelial growth is used as food by the ants. In turn, the excreta of ants acts as a preferred food for the fungus. Ant excreta contain certain proteolytic enzyme which the fungus lacks. So, the ants contribute their enzymatic apparatus to the fungus to degrade the proteins. This fungal gardening goes on generation after generation. A new virgin ant before leaving out an old nest to move into the new nest carries with it a pellet of fungus in a pocket below the mouth and deposit it in her new royal chamber. Third category of mutualism is mutualism between animal and animal species. Cleveland in 1926 reported the presence of a multi-flagellated protozoan Trichonympha campanula as a symbiont in the intestine of white ant termite. The ant provide food and shelter to the protozoan which in turn secretes cellulose enzyme to digest cellulose of wood ingested by the ant. Cellulose is hydrolyzed to sugars which is used by both the partners. When the gut lining of termite is ready for molting, trichonympha undergoes encystment and are passed out with the molting. To ensure infection, the ant eats its mold. Newly hatched termite licks the anus of the older termites to ingest the symbiont. About 11 families and 40 genera of flagellates have been reported from the intestine of termites. Clone fish and sea anemone association. Nemo gets a safe home that protects him from the predators and tirelessly attacking on enemies and protect the sea anemone from predators. It also feeds the anemone. Next category is mutualism between microbe and plant. Best example of this category is nitrogen fixing bacteria. In this symbiotic relationship, the bacterium rhizobium forms nodules in the roots of the leguminous plants. These nodules mainly found on the secondary roots of the leguminous plant like pea, gram, and other pulses. The bacteria obtained carbohydrates, water, minerals and shelter from the leguminous plant while in return 
fix gaseous nitrogen as nitrites and nitrates which are used by the plants in their growth nitrogen fixing occurs in the presence of an enzyme nitrogenase which operates in anaerobic conditions maintained by a red colored pigment like hemoglobin which acts as an oxygen scavenger there are different strains of bacteria which grow on certain specific species of legumes if here you can see section of nodulated roots of leguminous plant in which bacteria are present there which help in fixing the free atmospheric nitrogen and now after fixation plant is able to use this nitrogen similar kind of mutualistic association is found in water fern azolla and nitrogen fixing cyanobacterium anavina you can see here in this slide that how they are present in the leaf cavity of the fern in the same way an other example is of cycas and anabina the cyanobacterium anabina is present in the corolloid root of cycas here they fix the atmospheric free nitrogen which plant can use easily one more example of such type of mutualistic association is found in bacterium nostoc and anthocyrus which is also known as horn word now the third category of positive relationship is the commensalism it is a simplest kind of interspecific positive interaction in which smaller member called commensal is benefited while the larger member called host is neither benefited nor harmed so commensalism can be defined as the biological relationship in which one species benefits from an interaction while the host species is neither positively or negatively affected to any tangible degree a commensal may get food habitat transport or support like mutualism the commensal may be permanently associated with the host or contact is temporary and the casual for the short duration most of these commensals are not host specific while some are strictly host specific it may be categorized into three types first is epiphytes second is epizomes and third is forezi first of all epiphytes here epi means over and phyta means plant so this is a plant and plant relationship epiphytes are plants growing perched on other plants and use the host plant only as support and not for water or food supply these are most common in tropical rain forests for example bromeliad many orchids and hanging mosses these epiphytes synthesize their own food and are independent from the host in the matter of nutrition in epiphytes there is a special tissue called velamen over the root surface and can take up water from the atmosphere here you can see orchid epiphyte next is spanish moss tillandsia grows on the bark of oak and pine trees lianas are vine that begin life on the ground as small self supporting shrub and rely on other plants to reach the light rich environment of the upper canopy next is epizoans these are those animals which grow as fixed commensals on plants or other animals the best example is of sucker fish or remora which attaches itself on the under surface of a shark or a large sea turtle by its sucker 
This sucker is actually a modified dorsal fin and fish use it for transport and also gets food pieces falling from the shark spray. You can see here that many small fishes they attach themselves to a large shark. In the same way, pilot fish now crates accompanies the shark during swimming and eats up on the pieces of food which fall during the tearing of the prey by the shark. Next example is of the spongy collar crab lives in the spongy seal of Euplectella, commonly known as Venus flower basket as endocommensal. Such relationship is also found in animal with plants. The example is of Ostria fronds on the roots of the red mangrove tree. The oyster has a solid base to live and mangrove is not disadvantaged. In the same way, Entamoeba coli lives in the intestine of man. A small tropical fish, Pharesphere, lives inside the cloaca of sea cucumber as an endocommensal. Opalina and Nyctotherus reside in the rectum of a neurons, for example, frog and toads, and feed upon their fecal matter. Several species of barnacles, mollusks, and tube worms on the horseshoe crab Limulus polythemus. Third category is of Forezi. In this, one animal attaching to the another animal for transportation only and this concerns mainly arthropods examples of which are mites on the insects such as beetles flies or bees and other example is of pseudo scorpions on mammals and millipedes on the birds for as it can be either obligate or facultative it is very clear now that positive interactions influence biodiversity by creating alliances between species that allow them to coexist the benefits of these associations are numerous they include the provision of food habitat and more specialized services such as pollination dispersal predator defense and reduction of physical stress so this is all about the positive interactions or the cooperative relationships between the different species the negative interactions we will study in the part 2 so till then good luck thank you